Hello everyone. Today we would like to talk about the revision of the EPO guidelines for examination, which take effect on the 1st of March 2021. While there have been a number of amendments, maybe the major one is the amendment on the part of the adaptation of the description. Tobias, what has changed? The amendment in the guidelines, which are the primary guide for more than 4,000 examiners working at the EPO, is in the section dealing with the requirement of clarity of the claims, Article 84 EPC. More precisely, it is section F, Roman numeral 4, 4.3, which deals with inconsistencies. In simple terms, the new guidelines require the applicant to delete subject matter that is not covered by the claim or mark it prominently as not being in accordance with the invention. Now, Christoph, the question patent prosecutors will often face is what is the better deal, deleting or marking as not being in accordance with the claimed invention? Well, I guess there is two aspects to that question. The first one, of course, is the impact on the claim scope. What does it do to the claim during infringement proceedings. But there is another one, and that is what happens if you delete something from the description and later on the patent is challenged in opposition or in validity proceedings, can you then still use uh, the deleted parts to amend your claims if need be? Right, taking the second question first, the answer is rather straight. Features that belong to embodiments that have been deleted or declared as not being in accordance to the invention can be reintroduced after grant to defend the patent in amended form. This follows directly from Article 123.2 EPC, which refers to the content of the application as filed, not to any later amendments. While there have been cases where such amendments were not allowed, these are mostly older cases, and nowadays the prevailing view is that reintroducing deleted or marked features is allowed post-grant. However, as national authorities have competence of post-grant validity challenges once the opposition window is closed, and national jurisdictions might apply a different standard, Patent attorneys are nevertheless well advised to apply a rather restrictive approach as regards amendments to the description. Christoph, speaking about national authorities, what is the impact on infringement proceedings? Well, take an example, a claim directed to a connector, and that claim has been limited during the prosecution proceedings to a female type connector. Now, there is an embodiment uh, in the specification which has elements of both female type and male type connectors. So it is debatable whether that hybrid embodiment falls under the claim scope of the claim limited to female type. If you mark this hybrid embodiment as clearly not claimed, you will have no chance anymore to convince any judge that the defendant's product, which is similar to such an embodiment, indeed infringes. On the other hand, if you delete this embodiment from the description, at least in Germany, there is no clear case law that would allow the defendant to rely on the prosecution history to form a clear non-infringement argument. So from this perspective, deletion rather than marking as unclaimed would be preferable. Right, this applies to the question of literal infringement. Christoph, would the situation be different if one considered infringement on a doctrine of equivalence? Maybe not much. We have clear case law in Germany saying that if you disclose an embodiment but do not claim it or even mark it as explicitly not claimed, you cannot catch such an embodiment with the doctrine of equivalence. Now, such a case law does not exist for embodiments that were originally disclosed in the application and later on deleted. Again, we don't have case law in Germany that looks at the prosecution history there. So there might be at least a small chance that you catch such an embodiment under the doctrine of equivalence. But that chance is probably small because if the examiner asks you to delete or mark the embodiment as unclaimed because it's not patentable, the defendant will likely have the defense of practicing the prior art, which in Germany is called the Formstein defense, uh, and therefore you will not win much in the end. So overall, from a claim scope point of view, deletion is preferable rather than marking as unclaimed. 
But our advice would be that if the examiner makes you remove such a feature because it's not patentable, do not hope that you can cover it with claim interpretation or under the doctrine of equivalence in infringement proceedings. It would be better in this case to file a divisional application. Thank you, Christoph. All in all, the primary rule seems to be amend the description as little as possible. If there is no inconsistency between the claims and the description, there should be no objection on the Article 84 EPC in this regard. As a fallback position, if there is an alleged inconsistency and you cannot convince the examining division, like in the connector example, then delete rather than disclaim. Finally, there might be situations where you have passages in a description that are directed to a component that is in relation to the claimed entity or that constitutes a larger part than the claimed entity, like a housing used for the connector or a system using the claimed connector. In these cases, rather than deleting or disclaiming, the first approach might be trying to add a claim on this component. If this does not work, you may use positive language to remove the inconsistency, like for example saying the housing that is disclosed can be used in conjunction with the claimed connector. Thank you for this summary, Tobias. If you have questions on this topic, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.